In this video we're going to tie a little fly called the Morris Boatman. It's a great little lake fly. Imitates a water boatman. First thing we're going to do is start with a TMCO 200R or a Daiichi 1270 curved hook and a black bead to match. And we're going to use some olive thread. First thing we're going to do is build an underbody and I'm going to use some ultra chenille for this in micro size and you can really use whatever color you like for this because you're not going to see it it's just an underbody to build up the taper and bulk of this fly so the first piece I'm just going to tie on one side of the shank of the hook and then I'll move over here to the other side of the shank of the hook and I'm going to tie it just to the hook point and then I'll stop and trim it off and then I'll move my thread back up. Now each time I do this I just kind of make sure that those are flat and on each side of the shank of the hook. Now I'm going to do this same thing again on the far side, kind of alternating sides as I do it, but I'm going to stop just short of where I tied in the first one. That'll kind of help build a little bit of a taper to this fly. And then I'll do the same thing here on my side. Now, depending on what size you're tying, you can do this one more time or two more times. We're tying, I believe, on a 16 today. So just three times should be enough for this size. So again, just one side and I'm going to stop well short of where I finished my second one. Then for the last time on my side here. And then we can just flatten it out once more with our fingers and then really make sure we cover up most of it. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look pretty either at this point because this is all going to get covered up. You just want to make sure that you're fairly even and you're nice and flat. You can see as I rotate it, see how nice and wide that body is. That is what a water boatman looks like and that is what we want. So once I have all that kind of covered up, we're going to move to the next step which is actually a pretty important step. So I'm going to come here to the back. I'm going to come a little ways away from the body and I'm going to build up a thread ball. And what this is going to do is stop my flashaboo from sliding down the bend of the hook when I get to wrapping it to build the body. Oops. Let's try that again. I try to build as small of a ball as I can. Which is kind of hard to do sometimes with some of this fine thread. But once I have a ball built, I'll take my thread a ways from it. And then we're going to take a teal feather, and this is going to be what we're going to use for the casing, or the back of the fly. So I'm just going to strip away all the base fibers, just kind of exposing the tip. And then we're going to tie this in with the curved part curving up. So I'm just going to take a loose wrap of thread and just kind of capture the entire tip of that feather, kind of draw them together a little more here so I can get them in one, one swoop. Nice loose wrap of thread, a second loose wrap of thread. Then I'm just going to pull that, that feather ever so slightly and what that's going to do is just even up all those fibers. And then I can lay down with a couple more nice tight turns. Oopsie. Just 
just kind of clean it all up get any of the fuzzies out of there I didn't do that as cleanly as I normally do or as good as I like but it'll do now the next thing we're gonna do is tie in the body material which is gonna be our green flashaboo I'm gonna take two strands of that if I can get to them here in my package We're just going to tie this in with each strand right next to each other. Tie that in all the way back down to the teal. And I'll take my thread forward. Now we're ready to tie in the legs. For this, I'm going to use some olive colored Life Flex or Span Flex or Uniflex. It's all very similar just a little leg and you see it has a curve. I want that curve to swoop back onto the fly. I don't want that curve to face forward because our fly is going to be swimming. So I'm just going to take that leg and tie it in so that those legs will face back so then once I have it kind of in place I'm just going to wrap back down onto it with a couple wraps and get them to the side of the hook. And I'll just kind of use some little X wraps to place it and get the curvature of those legs that I want. There we go. And then I can take my thread forward and just cover up any last fuzzies that you have and then I'm going to take my legs and pull them forward and lash them down with a couple loose wraps and that's just going to keep them out of my way as I wrap my body so I'm going to take my flashaboo here and I'm going to take my first wrap now you can see that first wrap is important because it did not slide back down over the teal. That's because of that thread lump that I made. Very important piece or else you're going to be sitting there fiddling with this flashaboo trying to get it to wrap up the body. Oh, and Let's try that again. My flashaboo kind of split and fell away from each other. I have found that it's easiest to keep them together as you wrap it as much as you can just overlapping wraps and that helps keep it together and get the coverage that you need I want to make sure you cover up that entire underbody and then when I get to the legs I can just undo my thread jump the flash of boot in front of them and if you want you can do a little X wrap through them That'll help cover up any of the exposed thread on the top or underside. And then you can get to the front and secure it with your thread. And then you can trim it out of there. And now you can take your teal and very carefully pull that teal over the top. Take a loose wrap of thread just to capture it. And then you can kind of spread it out very carefully over the top of the fly. Then you can capture it with several wraps.
then you can trim that teal as close as you can and then I'll usually just take a few more thread wraps to kind of get that teal to all lay down Then we can whip finish. Trim out the excess. Then we can trim our legs. I like to trim them so that they're even. Right back just past the bend of the hook. just like that. And now we're ready to build the body. For that I'm just going to take some UV fly finish here and thick. You can also use epoxy if you prefer that. I'm going to put a big dollop of that on there. Then I'm going to take my bodkin here and just spread it all out onto the body. Careful not to get any on the legs. Takes a little bit of concentration to kind of work your way around the legs and not get any where you don't want it to go. So I'll just kind of work my way around up the sides. And then you can take some off if you need to and put it in a different place. And we'll need just a little bit more here on the top. And then once we get it even, we should be ready to cure it. But make sure you get it everywhere before you do your first zap with the light. And I always like mine to be perfect, but the fish probably don't necessarily care if it's absolutely perfect or not. But the fly tire in me just can't leave it alone sometimes. All right, once we have it even, I like to turn it upside down. I scrape off all the excess on the bottom and on the top. And then we're ready to cure it. There we are. Find my light. And once you get enough on there, you can give it a quick zap. And if you need to add more, then this is the time to do it. Usually I just add one more layer on the top just to finish it off. This is a much lighter layer, just a little bit, just to smooth out any of the fuzzies, lumps, or bumps. Sometimes you get some fuzzies in there that are left over from when you trimmed some material. 
So this last coat will really just finish it off and give it that nice smooth look, that kind of bubble. And that's it. That is a Morris Boatman. Great little lake fly, especially later in the season when those boatmen start laying eggs and jumping around. Must have fly for any late season still water.